Our gospel lesson today comes to us again from the gospel according to Matthew. We are reading out of chapter 13, verses 24 to 30, and then also verses 36 through 43. So hear these words from Matthew's gospel. Jesus told them another parable. The kingdom of heaven is like a man who sowed good seed in his field. But while everyone was sleeping, his enemy came and sowed weeds among the wheat and went away. When the wheat sprouted and formed heads, then the weeds also appeared. The owner's servants came to him and said, Sir, didn't you sow good seed in your field? Where then did these weeds come from? An enemy did this, he replied. The servants asked him, Do you want us to go and pull them up? No, he answered, because while you are pulling the weeds, you may uproot the wheat with them. Let both grow together until the harvest. At that time, I will tell the harvesters, first collect the weeds and tie them in bundles to be burned. Then gather the wheat and bring it into my barn. Then he left the crowd and went into the house. His disciples came to him and said, Explain to us the parable of the weeds in the field. He answered, The one who sowed the good seed is the Son of Man. The field is the world, and the good seed stands for the people of the kingdom. The weeds are the people of the evil one, and the enemy who sows them is the devil. The harvest is the end of the age, and the harvesters are angels. As the weeds are pulled up and burned in the fire, so it will be at the end of the age. The Son of Man will send out His angels, and they will weed out of His kingdom everything that causes sin and all who do evil. They will throw them into the blazing furnace where there will be weeping and gnashing of teeth. Then the righteous will shine like the sun in the kingdom of their Father. Whoever has ears, let them hear. And here ends our gospel reading for the day. May God add his blessing on the reading of his word. Let us pray. Gracious God, we thank you for your word, for in it and through it you reveal yourself to us. Help us to hear you and to see you today. And we pray this in Jesus' name. Amen. Well, last week, you may remember, we talked about sowing seeds, didn't we? Just like we talked about sowing seeds this week. It was a little different, though, last week. We talked about sowing seeds into different kinds of soil, including even on the path where the seeds would not grow. We talked about how important it is to be good soil so that those things within us can grow and we can become good servants and good disciples of Jesus. It was... Uh, uh, brought to my attention last week after the service was over that there is a good comparison that we can look at, and that is the comparison between the garden that is out here on the north side of the church where the soil is not really very good, and the garden that's down there uh, by the old school uh, where the soil is really good because it has been fertilized and worked and all that kind of stuff. And there's a difference in the rate of growth that you can see in those two gardens. The stuff that's growing in the good soil down there is really growing well. The stuff that's kind of struggling in this dirt that we have up here is not growing all that well. Though Ken is putting in a lot of work in both gardens to make sure that, that there is growth. But there is clear difference between the growth that is taking place, and it depends on the soil. Now, in what we've read this morning, there is a, a man who owns the land, and he has gone out to sow seeds, and he has sowed these seeds in his field, and apparently all of the soil in that field is good soil. He doesn't pick and choose where he sows, but he makes sure it is in that field 
But there's another one who's also sowing seeds in that field. And the devil is sowing bad seeds in that field as well. Well, when things begin to grow, guess what? The weeds are growing along with the wheat. And so this man's servants, those who help him in the fields, they come to him and say, wait a minute, we're confused. We thought you put good stuff in that field. And the man says, well, I did. But there's another at work here, and he is sowing evil in that field. And so he has planted those weeds, and they're growing right along with the wheat. And so the servants say, well, we can, go, we can take care of that. We can go out and pull out all those weeds and make sure that only the good stuff remains. But the owner says, no, let's not do that. Let's wait. Let's wait until it's time to harvest everything. And then we'll pull out the weeds and throw them in the fire and burn them. And then we'll have just the wheat left and we can harvest that and put it in the barn because if we try to pull those weeds out right now, we may damage the wheat. And we must protect that wheat. So let's just let them go together for now. And we'll take care of the problem at the right time in the future. And so that's what happens now, just like the parable that we heard Jesus tell us last week, we also get an explanation of the parable this week as Jesus goes through explaining what each of the different parts represent. And so this owner who is sowing the seeds is the son of man. And this field in which he is sowing those seeds represents the world. And what is growing in that field after he sows those seeds, the wheat, those are the people of the kingdom. Now, the one who sows the bad seeds that are also growing in that field is the devil. And those weeds that are growing belong to him. Now, when it's harvest time, the angels will come for that harvest. And they will first deal with the weeds. They will first get those out of the field toss them into the furnace where they will be burned, and then come back and take care of the wheat that is to be harvested and taken in and put in the barns of the owner. And so we know that during this time of harvest, which all of this points to, the time of harvest, some of what's growing in that field will be in a good place. Some of what's grown in that field will not be in a good place. And so the question kind of comes to us then. Do we want to be shining like the sun in the kingdom at harvest time? Or burning like coal in the furnace? We're all in the field. If that field represents the world, we're all in that field. And so that question presents itself. Do we want to be shining like the sun or burning like coal or burning like those weeds in the furnace? And so Jesus is saying something will happen here at harvest time. And all of this will be taken care of. Now, the harvest of what we have planted here in the county, that's still months away, isn't it? We have to wait while this stuff grows. The beans or the corn or whatever we have planted, we have to wait until that is ripe for harvest, and then that harvest will take place. Those of, of us who are farmers, and I am clearly not one, they know when that harvest will take place, and it will take place at the right time. We can't rush that. We can't do it early before things are ripe. If we wait too long, stuff might rot in the field. So it will be done at the right time. And so it is with God's harvest. The challenge about that is we don't know exactly when that will take place. We can probably plan roughly when the harvest of the things we have planted here will take place. But this harvest that Jesus is talking about in this parable... We don't know when that will happen. And even Jesus has said, I don't know when that will happen. But it will happen at the right time. 
when God decides it's time for that harvest to take place, that's when it will take place. And so this all is pointing us toward this idea of harvest. And Jesus is trying to give people an idea that this harvest will take place at God's choosing, when God decides the time is right. But we're all in the field. We're all in that field. Now, this psalm that Ken has read for us today tells us about being in the presence of God, doesn't it? And it tells us that no matter where we go, we're still in the presence of God. We're still essentially in that field. We're still in the world. And God is everywhere watching over us. Early in that psalm, it tells us that God's right there with us, hemming us in behind and in front. And wherever we go, God's hand is still on us, still with us. And so it doesn't matter where we go. God is there always watching over us, always protecting us, caring for us, always. And that's a good thing because we need God's protection. We need God's care. We need God's love for us. And as we look at some of the characteristics of this parable, it becomes obvious why. The first thing that we need to take note of, specifically in this parable, is the presence of evil. Evil is with us. Evil is in our midst all the time. It's been around us from the beginning, and it's still here. It's not just here with the pandemic. That's another expression of it. But evil is always around us in one form or another. And so we need God's protection to take care of us in the midst of this evil that is around us and that seeks us. And so we need God's presence. We need to know that God is with us always because evil is just around the corner in front of us or right behind us. And so the, the presence of evil is very real in this world. That challenges us, especially as we put it in the context of the next point that we need to remember, which is that we're waiting, aren't we? We're waiting for God's harvest. We're waiting for God to bring to culmination all that God is doing in the world. We don't know when that will be, and so we're waiting. How many of you would put waiting among your top three favorite things to do? Just raise your hand. Top five? Top 10, top 100, it's probably not there at all. Waiting is not one of our favorite things to do. Number two, Mike's telling me, no, right, right now. Yeah, we're waiting to get out of this. What's that? Ah, ah, the bottom two, okay. At the end of the list of our favorite things to do. We don't like to do it. We get impatient. We think of all the things that we could be doing instead of waiting. We just don't like waiting. But we're waiting. We're waiting for God's time. We don't decide when everything comes to a conclusion. That's God's decision. And it's difficult for us to live with that. It's difficult for us to live knowing that there is evil in the world. It's difficult for us to wait until God decides to bring all this to culmination, to bring in his kingdom and so we need to remember in the midst of all of that, that evil and that waiting, that God is with us. The reason that landowner told those servants not to go out and pull up those weeds was because it could possibly damage the wheat. That owner's overall objective was the protection of that wheat. And the overall objective of God is providing us salvation and protection in this world. That's why God sent Jesus to us. And so in the midst of those things that challenge us, 
we know that God is here as well, watching over us. Wherever we go, God is watching over us. In the midst of this evil, God is watching over us. In the midst of this waiting where we could be getting more impatient all the time, God is watching over us. God is taking care of us. Now, there certainly are things we can do to help take care of one another as well as ourselves in the midst of this. But ultimately, we are in God's care. We need God to be caring for us. And God is doing that in the midst of this. And so as we wait, it's good to remind ourselves and one another, God's still with us. God has not abandoned us. We may still be waiting, but God's waiting with us for the right time, which is God's time to bring this harvest in. And so we cannot lose sight of God's protection. We cannot lose sight of the fact that God is watching over us all the time. Wherever we are, whatever we're doing, God is there taking care of us. And we are called as followers of Jesus to help take care of one another also. We can be a part of that protection that God is affording each one of us. So as you go through this week, if you read papers or check online or watch TV and you see those counts, all those different counts continuing to go up, and all the other things that are happening in the world right now, Remind yourself, God is here. God is caring for us in the midst of all of this and will continue to do so until God's harvest. Remind yourself throughout this week of God's presence. Let us pray. Gracious God, we thank you for your presence. We thank you for the care that you offer to us all the time. In the midst of everything that's going on, you are watching over us. We thank you for your protection, and we pray that you will continue to provide it. We pray that we, that we also can participate in protection be, by offering care to others and by reminding others of your presence. In so doing, we offer encouragement, we offer hope, we offer assurance to those who are feeling challenged right now. We pray, O oh God, that you will help us do that and remind us every day that you're here watching over us. And we pray all of this in Jesus' name. Amen.